Welcome to Thoughts Roundup. Yesterday we we talked just a little bit about books. I know everyone's using the computer now and I know how old I am. But I also run up with a lot of young people who have a feeling about books. There's just something about holding that book in your hand. S taking that pen and underlining and writing some little notes in the margin or on the side. Drawing error to something. In the wintertime, sit by the fire, even if you don't have wood fire, you have the fake fire. That's it gives you a feeling. It gives you a feeling of the cold winter night going on by you and you, you've you got your book. Years ago, I used to go to Blessing Bookstore in Naperville, Illinois. A friend of mine, Reverend Samuel Latta, who was also one of the great missionaries. Uh, he was from Illinois and he he knew about this place. And he took me to oh uh, I I used to say it had two two and a half acres of books. And uh, lately I wondered if I stretched it. I don't think so, but that's a lot of books, you know, and they were all old books. A lot of books came from England. A lot of those old preachers that wrote those sermon books and stuff get up early in the morning and do their writing and they studied. They were dedicated. And they wrote some beautiful, beautiful things. And so... I understand Naperville is not there no more as far as the books are concerned. Oh, how I'd like to spend another two or three hours in that bookstore one more time. But a book is where you find it. You you may never you may run by a garage sale and find a, the book that you wouldn't sell if you couldn't find another one. I, uh, fact is, uh, many years ago, I, I went to a bookstore uh, right across the street from the state capitol in Little Rock, Arkansas, and I found one book. Thoughts, it was so great. Uh, it was uh, Old and New Testament characters by an author, a preacher by the name of Clovis Chapel. When you look at his name, you think it's Chapel. But I had a friend of mine George Glass went to hear Clovis Chapel speak, and they introduced him as Chapel, not Chapel. So I tried to change my way of pronouncing his name in his honor. Well, that book, it's priceless. And you know something? That was over 60 years ago. The bookstore is no longer there, and I think the, I kind of think that the uh, government building maybe has totally changed uh, some way, the capital. And uh, now I want to tell you something. This will go way back when I was in Dallas, Texas in the 60s. We had what we call 
medallion story, stores. And uh, they were a forerunner of Walmart. That was before Walmart. And it, but it was a lot like Walmart is now. The medallion store. And they had a, they had a book. Uh, section in there and they kept it replenished and I was a frequent customer I didn't always buy a book because a lot of times it was they were not religious like I was looking for and things but anyway one day I saw a book it was called Who's Who in the Bible by Frank S. Mead. 250 Bible, uh, no, 300, I believe, 350 Bible characters, one for every day. And some of those characters just took a third of a page or a half a page because Frank Mead knew how to say it and get the most out of a few words. He said one sentence to make you think of a dozen th things. It was just that good. And he wrote the book in 1935. Why, that's the year I was born. That book is now 85 years old, but you know you can still buy it. You can still buy it new, as far as I know. Who's Who in the Bible by Frank S. Mead. Do you want it? Just talking about it makes me want to go out and buy another one. God bless you.